Samuel, in verse 20 of that same scripture, he said, all of Israel knew from Dan to Beersheba that God had established Daniel as a prophet. There is a level of establishment you cannot come to except as the word of God comes to you. That God, and when the word of God begins to come, you will discover only God makes men. That word that comes to you can mobilize the man who is supposed to support you to support you. That word that comes to you can mobilize the resources that should come to you to come to you. But if that word does not come, you will spend your whole life as a wanderer. Because you will be traveling from place to place looking for helpers. You are not supposed to look for them. They should look for you. The Bible says your sons and your daughters will come from afar. It says strangers will stand to build your walls. If you start running looking for helpers, it means you have left where God's word is. But if you are where God's word is, what God's word is everybody converges there. The wicked man, the good man, the kind man, the patient man, all of them are regulated by the word. When God speaks to you, he can raise a, a hidden king to come give you. I heard the story that in 1996 or 95, thereabout, when Rehad Bonke came to Nigeria for a crusade, a butcher went to his hotel room in the night, knocked, opened the door, and saw the seed. The president of the nation, who is not a Christian, he went to him and gave him bags full of money to support his crusade. He didn't need to be a Christian to do it. God does not need Christians to help you. God does not need any kind of religion to help you. When God speaks, even a man who says he's an atheist can be commanded to help you. Did you not read about Elijah? There were no men. God mobilized the raven. So even if men don't exist, God can command animals to help you. And animals will go and bring what they don't eat and give to you. They said the raven is the most stingy bird that is known. But the raven, day and night, will bring food and give Elijah and go back. We never knew whether the raven was filled or hungry. And there was no record that God fed the raven. The commandment of the raven is to come and feed Elijah. Somebody will wake up with your name and he will lose his sleep. And the money, the money that he was keeping for a project, suddenly he will bring it to you. Somebody will wake up and forget that he has 30 people to support and give you a connection where nobody you know would have given to you. The reason is because the word of God dwells with you. This is how men become invincible. They carry the word everywhere they go. You want new beginning, then you need new words. You want new beginning, you need new utterances. You need new beginning, then new oracles need to come to you. Those are the things that establish men. He say, I the Lord, I take the beggar from the donkey and establishes him upon, upon thrones that he may inherit them. So you are not just coming to the palace and going back. You inherit those thrones because the word of the Lord comes to you. It doesn't matter where you are now. What matters is what you are doing where you are. If you will only purge yourself and consecrate to God, you will be shocked what will happen to you overnight. And men will wonder, is this not Saul? Is Saul also among the prophets? You can become a part of anybody and anywhere, depending on the word that comes to you. Elohim Adonai. They fight for things. People who don't have understanding, they manipulate for relationships. Men who have understanding, they search for new words. New words, new words. Because with the new words comes new relationships. With the new words comes new possessions. With the new words come new promotions. With the new words comes acceleration. Elijah told the king, go wait. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. The sky was dry. Elijah knew how it works. And he didn't talk to anybody. The Bible said he went, put his head in between his thighs. And he was waiting for the sign from heaven. That's how the words function. Your ground may be dry. Wait for the word. When the word comes, rain can appear in dry season. When the word comes, 
the, the valley may be empty. Forget it. It will be full with rain. What you need are wars. Trust me, brothers and sisters. They told you you will never give birth. Wait for your word. They told you you will never prosper. Wait for your word. I've seen people before that their fallopian tube was cut off, wound removed. And they gave birth with doctors report that they have no wounds. Nothing is permanent so long as God is still speaking. Everything will become permanent when God stops talking. But so long as God is talking, nothing is permanent. Even the dead, the Bible said, shall come back from the grave at the instance of the voice. It said, they that are dead, they will hear the voice of the Son of God and they shall live. So even death is not permanent when God is talking. Who told you you are finished? There's a new beginning for you. Because your word will come to you. Your word will come to you. In the name of Jesus. You find men who move from glory to glory. They spend the word of God. They don't spend money. They spend the word. Every time. Their bank is not access bank. It's not Zenith. Zenith and access bank is where they put by products. Their bank is heaven. And when they find out that something is going down. They go and look for more wars. The more wars come. The more things happen. And so they don't spend money. They spend words. A man will show up and say, God told me, I'm a voice to the nations. And you will look at him and say, who is the, where is the voice? You, you will laugh. Wait for three years. When that word mature, you will be amazed. Somebody will come to you and tell you, God told me I will have a twin. And you say, but you have been buried for 10 years. Wait for the word to mature. What you call barrenness is doctor's report. When the word comes, paradigms are altered. When the word comes, protocols are destroyed. When the word comes, impossible becomes possible. And that's why wise men travel to where the word dwells. They may need to go there by prayer. They may need to go there by meditation. They may need to go there by worship. But by all means, they will go to where the word dwells. When you find men who make impact, they seek the word day and night. He said, this book of the law, Joshua 1 8, shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate upon it day and night to see that you do what is written there. Then, he didn't say God. He said, you shall make thy way prosperous and have good success. That means God has perfected everything already. It's your choice. And somebody will find the word today that will change barrenness. Somebody finds a word today that will change poverty. Somebody finds a word today that will break a curse. Somebody will find a word today that will change your story. You are not defeated. So long as God is speaking, there is hope. The Bible said there is hope for a tree that is cut off. At the scent of water, it will sprout again. There is hope for someone. I came to tell you, your new beginning is a reality. Your new beginning is a shorty. It must happen. Just find walls. Find walls. Become an excavator of walls. The way archaeologists search the earth for relics. Astronauts search space for things. UFOs begin to search the world. Sometimes you carry the book of Psalms. You sit on it. The Lord, you are, you are searching. You are searching. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor is seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is on the law of the law. And on this law that he meditate day and night. Then suddenly, you now hear, it's like the tree that is planted by the rivers of living water. Its fruits will not wither. He provided his fruits in his season. His leaves will not wither. And suddenly, it dawns on you, I will not wither. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. It doesn't matter who comes up against me. I will not wither. I will bring forth my fruit in his season. Did you not read what the psalmist said? He said, my enemies rise up against me. They say, there is no hope for me. He said, but thou, O oh Lord, you are a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of my head. For thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me.